Well, greetings everyone and welcome to Movie Goodness, where we examine life through cinema. I am your host, Kevin Reed, and this show is brought to you by the KB Radio Network. Greetings everyone, greetings, greetings, hello, how are you, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, whenever you're listening. How are you doing today? I'm excited about today. Today, I am talking about one of my favorite actors uh for no reason other than he is the most entertaining person ever <laughs> ever I, I i love nicholas cage nicholas cage i don't care what movie he's in whether it's a drama uh action movie a comedy Nicholas Cage gives 110%. Now, whether you feel he's a great actor or, uh, you know, whatever, that's that's debatable. Uh, it's all subjective, and I get it, actually, because, <laughs> let's be real, some of the movies he's in, especially as of late, have been Boo Boo Kitty. But Nicholas Cage, I don't care what the movie is, he gives 110%. Undeniable, undeniable, and sometimes it has been described as unhinged. <laughs> it has been described as uh, 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 Nicholas Cageisms. You know, he, he's a little wacky, a little crazy. Uh, I mean, I, the list goes on and on. The dude, the dude. It depends on the role. The dude is going to give you either the uh, uh, most endearing performance uh the most comedic performance or the most manic performance and in some cases he gives you all of them in, in one performance uh nicholas cage is amazing and that's who we're going to talk about today and when uh it's not going to be your typical dedication show i mean the man's still alive you know <laughs> this isn't a memorial uh, this is, I'm just going to talk about some of my favorite Nicolas Cage performances, and we're going to review, in my opinion, his best performance. And to this day, it still is considered in my eyes as one of the funniest movies I've ever seen in my life. I can watch it. <laughs> no matter what's going on, no matter what day of the week it is, whenever that movie is on and I watch it, I die laughing. And I mean, die laughing. Literally, you know, people use the expression, oh, I was rolling out my seat. Oh, I was on the floor laughing. I was, it was gut busting. This literally happened to me watching Raising Arizona. And we're going to go through a, 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 a review of Raising Arizona as one of my favorite or probably the favorite. It's hard. It's hard to put up number one on on Nicolas Cage, to be honest with you. And it was so difficult. It was so difficult. I came up with five. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to talk about my bet of uh, my five best Nicolas Cage films or. To be more accurate, my favorite. Because uh, these aren't the greatest movies of all time. But it, they are my favorite. And no matter what, I'm going to stop and watch one of these five films. If it's on. I'm, I'm stopping and I'm watching. Uh, and you may ask yourself, why are we talking about Nicolas Cage today? Well, like I said, today is the release of The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. It is being released in theaters this Friday, uh, April the 22nd. And I, I'm i going to see it this weekend. And I have to see it because I love Nicolas Cage. And Nicolas Cage in that film is playing a version of Nicolas Cage. <laughs> and that alone, if you're a Nicolas Cage fan... That should draw you to the theater in drones, man. I mean, you ought to, if you don't have $10, $20, how much it costs to go to the theater? Um, 
you're gonna borrow it. <laughs> you're gonna take it. From, you're gonna borrow it. You're gonna probably uh, uh, gather your lunch money for the week and and go see this movie because you're a huge Nicolas Cage fan. I am, uh, and I'm going to see this film. So I figured in honor of the release of The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent, which currently, at the time of the recording of this episode, holds a 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. That's rare. I'm pretty sure that number will drop by the weekend, but it won't drop much. <laughs> so it is 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 certified fresh and I'm 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 so excited for it. But let's go through a little history of Nicolas Cage. Now Nicolas Cage actual name is Nicholas Kim Coppola. And if Coppola sounds familiar, you may think of Francis Ford Coppola, the director of uh Apocalypse Now, the Godfather trilogy, Bram Stoker's Dracula. Yeah, that that Francis Ford Coppola, that is his uncle. And he is part of the Coppola family, which is a lot of them. <laughs> there are a lot of Coppolas. And um, for reasons, um, for reasons that's, that's kind of respectable, he decided not to use the name Coppola in his career. Uh, he um, wanted to stand on his own. Um, so he changed his name to Nicolas Cage uh, to avoid, you know, nepotism. And so, uh, you know, being the nephew of the one of the greatest directors or one of the best directors or however, um, your opinion on Francis Ford Coppola is yours I because I have mine. <laughs> I have mine. I, I'm not the biggest Francis Ford Coppola fan of his films. I I liked I liked the Godfather films. Uh Apocalypse Now was interesting. And here's one out of left field for y'all. Not the biggest Godfather fan. Um good movie. Uh but the first two were good. I didn't like the third one. And I guess that's why I, I did Enjoyed the first two a lot, but then the third one kind of just took some of the taste out of it, and I and all of them have to uh, bear the blunt of my disdain. <laughs> so that's why I'm kind of, at this point in my life I'm like I don't like you know I, I don't like that's not fair. I I'm not the biggest fan of them. Um, I loved Bram Stoker's Dracula, loved it. But anyways, this ain't about Francis Ford Coppola. But anyways, Nicolas Cage, he changed his name to Cage. And he was inspired, him being a huge Marvel Comics fan. Huge comic book fan, actually. Uh, not just Marvel. One of his favorite comic book characters is Luke Cage. Yeah, so he took the name Cage from Luke Cage. And... The rest, as they say, is history. And he went on to have uh, a stellar, stellar career. He even won an Academy Award for his performance in Leaving Las Vegas, uh, which was a pretty decent film. I, once again, it's not one of my favorites, um, but it was a good, great performance by him. Uh, very depressing. But my first time ever seeing... Nicholas Cage was in a film called Peggy Sue Got Married, which coincidentally was directed by his uncle, Francis Ford Coppola. <laughs> but uh, that was my first time seeing him, him and uh, Kathleen Turner, who I had the biggest crush on when I was little. And um, yes, I love Kathleen Kennedy. Um, I'm Kennedy, what? Kathleen <laughs> Turner. Uh, Kathleen Kennedy, I, I don't know you, but... Uh, no, no, I was talking about Kathleen Turner. But anyways, uh, yeah, that was my first time ever seeing him. And um, I always thought he was a kind of a strange actor <laughs> back then. Actually, actually, to be honest with you, now that I think about it, no, that wasn't the first time. First time I saw him was in uh, Fast Times of Richmond High. 
And, you know, I was younger then, so I, I wasn't really paying attention that much to him. But um, later on, I picked up and I was like, man, Nicholas Cage was in here. But, um, yeah, he didn't have a big part. But, yeah, that was my first time ever seeing him. Then I saw him in, as far as a big role in Peggy Sue Got Married. But uh, he went on to have a stellar career. He wanted, like I said, he won an Oscar. After he won the Oscar, then it really went, it, it really, really <laughs> went into a different path because he went action movie star, man. And no hate because I loved him. I loved them all. I, I, I mean, I enjoy, well, not all, but I enjoyed most of them. Uh, uh, he went into some dramas. Uh, I liked The Weatherman. I liked uh, 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 Lord of War. Um, Family Man. Family Man, I really did enjoy. I, I really, really, I think that's one of his underrated uh, films. Um and so on and so forth. Uh, 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 he 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 is an amazing an amazing actor. So that leads us to my favorite Nicolas Cage films, and in no particular order, uh, except for one, and that's the one we're reviewing. But uh, these are the Nicolas Cage films that no matter what, no matter what, I'm watching them. I mean, I'm stopping what I'm doing, and I'm watching them. One, the first one on my list, I guess if we had to count it down, if I have to put it in order, start off with number five. Number five is National Treasure from 2004. I enjoyed National Treasure. Wasn't looking for anything, uh, you know, it looked like a little whatever movie. Uh, wasn't expecting much. weren't trying to get much out of it. But hey, Nicholas Cage in a kind of a, uh, I guess treasure hunting figure. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll bite. You know, <laughs> I'll see how this go. What 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 could go wrong? Well, nothing went wrong. Uh, this 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 was great. I I really enjoyed it. Uh, the second one, it was all right, but it didn't live up to the first one. And this was very unique, very fun, uh, a nice adventure film uh, uh, to go on this treasure hunt. But it involved the United States. It was solely based in the United States. You didn't have to go to, you know, the Middle East and dig through the <laughs> sands and all this other stuff like like. Uh, Indiana Jones had to do, but uh, this brought it home, and it was it was fun. It was a fun adventure, um, you know. Still in the Declaration of Independence, and there's a secret map on the back of it, and all this. It, it was fun. It was exciting, and I really enjoyed Nicolas Cage in this film. I wish they would have had more of a, a franchise to it. I mean, like multiple movies. I know they had a sequel, and I believe that they are rebooting it. Uh, Disney is rebooting the series without Nicolas Cage, unfortunately. But um, I, because I, I enjoyed that character and I enjoyed him in it, and it was fun, and it looked like he was having fun, and that is one of the one of my favorite Nicolas Cage performances. Coming in at number four, coming in at number four is once again a film. I've re I've reviewed this film before in the past, and I didn't think much of it. It is based on a comic book, but I never read this particular comic book. So uh, when I saw the movie, I was so intrigued and so intrigued by Nicolas Cage's character in it. Um, it blew my mind. This film from 2010 or 2010 is the black comedy superhero film Kick-Ass. This movie rocks. I love this movie. And for one reason and one reason only, Nicolas Cage, <laughs> Nicolas Cage as Big Daddy. I loved Big Daddy in this movie. I guess because I'm a, 
I'm a Batman stan. And he, he basically was Batman in this movie. Uh, he stole the movie. He stole the movie from uh, Aaron Johnson. <laughs> he, he really did. It, they they could have called it Big Daddy. I mean, it was, I loved his character. It, the relationship between him and his daughter, p- portrayed by uh, Chloe Grace Moretz, was dynamite. His turn when he uh, 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 put on the Big Daddy outfit or the costume or however you want to put it, uniform, how, whatever. And he had the Adam West voice <laughs> from the 60s Batman series uh, with the Fu Manchu mustache and everything. Oh, man, I loved his performance in this movie. Like I said, he stole it. He deserves much more credit than what he uh, gets for it because it was amazing. It truly was an amazing Nicolas Cage performance, and it lands at number four on my favorite Nicolas Cage films. Coming in at number three was his first jump into the action. Right, I mean, right after he won the Academy Award, he walked off of the stage from the Academy Awards uh, without being slapped by Will Smith. He walked off the stage onto the set of the 1996 action thriller directed by Michael Bay, The Rock. Uh, <laughs> this was... So much fun in the theater. If you see it in the theater, uh, even if you see it at home, I don't care. This was so much fun. This is this is the type of action movies I love. These '90s action films, where it was just just pure ridiculousness. Um, <laughs> I loved it. I loved it, and I ate it all up. The film also starred uh, uh, Sean Connery and Ed Harris as. One of, this is one of his best performances. Uh, you actually got some great performances here from Sean Connery. Um, all all three of these gentlemen gave drama worthy performances, even though it was it was silly stuff. But they their performances were great. Sean Connery was basically he went he channeled his James Bond from back in the sixties. Um, which a lot of rumors are linking uh, a lot of theories, uh, uh, state that, uh, that's basically who he was. He was James Bond who was captured by the United States government and blah, 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 uh, which is a good theory, which actually holds a little weight to be honest with you. <laughs> but, uh, Nicholas Cage as this, um, FBI chemist. Who's not an action guy? He's not a shoot 'em up guy, but he he got drawn in on this mission to uh, uh, invade Alcatraz after it was taken hostage. You know that was, it's the nineties. You remember everything got <laughs> got taken hostage. Uh, 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 whether it was Alcatraz or a building or a plane or a subway or a bus or <laughs> whatever. It, Everything, everything was a terrorist, um, <laughs> it was on a terrorist bullseye back in the 90s, uh, until terrorists really did start doing stupid stuff, and now they don't have that anymore in film. But, um, before all that, before reality caught up to it, it was exciting to watch these films, and The Rock was one of them. I love The Rock. Uh, very fun, fun movie, fun action loved it and i love nicholas cage in it um mainly because no matter despite the fact that this was a big action film he wasn't the action guy you know later on he became the action guy with you know uh con air and uh films of that nature even to this next one which is the number two my number two favorite nicholas cage film which came out two years later the action thriller face off <laughs> face off face off almost got reviewed today face off i almost i almost had to flip a coin actually because i i love face off 
so much, people. So much. Actually, I'm going to pivot on y'all. I'm going to pivot on y'all because I'm going to review Face Off 2. Because <laughs> I'm going to review it. Uh, even though you might say, hey, you reviewed The Rock 2. Well, I didn't really review it. But um, <laughs> this Face Off, I'm going to review as well uh, as my number two favorite Nicolas Cage film. I was working at a movie theater when this movie came out. And it was kind of an underrated movie of that summer, of the summer of 97. Um, I had just graduated, in fact, and um, from high school. Uh, and I'm working at this movie theater, and I see that it's John Travolta. I see Nicolas Cage. It's called Face Off. I'm like, okay, what is this, a hockey movie? Um, <laughs> I'm like, what is this? What is what is this movie about? You know, and that, like I said, it, uh, back then, this is before YouTube and, you know, the boom of the internet. Didn't look up trailers. You saw trailers sparingly. So it was rare for you to see what a movie was really about. And even when you did see the trailer, uh, they didn't show you uh, three-fourths of the movie. Um, <laughs> they just showed you little little snips. And that was that. It had the voiceover and it kept it pushing. So I didn't know. I did not know that this movie was literally about a FBI agent. And a known terrorist switching faces. <laughs> that was the movie. And man, as cheesy, as ridiculous of a concept and film <laughs> that this movie was. And I fully acknowledge, I fully acknowledge that this movie is cheesy, campy, whatever, however you want to quantify it. It's all that. And I love every bit of it. Um, this film was directed by the action movie guru, John Woo. Um, this was <laughs> amazing of a film. Uh, the film starts off with uh, Nicolas Cage as Castor Troy, this, this terrorist. He's setting up this bomb in Los Angeles and... You know, the bomb is going to explode in a few days, however it goes. And John Travolta is the FBI agent who's been tracking Nicolas Cage. For the simple fact, uh, well, Nicolas Cage had killed his son uh, by accident, but he did kill him because he was trying to kill John Travolta's <laughs> character. Uh, but whatever the case may be. And, and for years... He's been tracking him, trying to catch him. So he knows him inside and out. He knows everything about Castor Troy or, or Nicolas Cage. It's going to get kind of confusing because they end up switching. But um, I'm just going to say Nicolas Cage and John Travolta. But uh, he catches up to him. He gets him. He catches him. He thought he killed him, but he ended up putting him in a coma. Here's the problem. They find out that before he went into this coma, he set this bomb in the middle of Los Angeles. Don't know where it's at. They can't find it. So they have to find out where it is. Unfortunately, Nicolas Cage is knocked out, right? He's, he's in this coma. So they can't get him to tell you. But Nicolas Cage has a brother who works for him and uh, well, works with him. And he's in prison. They caught him as well. And so uh, he would know. He'll be the only other person who would know. He's not going to talk. He's not going to. He's not going to rat out his brother. He's not going to uh, cooperate with the authorities. So they come up with this plan. Um, the government that is. To switch faces. Put Nicolas Cage face. On. John Travolta's face so John Travolta who knows Nicolas Cage inside and out literally <laughs> uh, he can go into the prison talk to his quote unquote brother and find out where this bomb is so that's the setup um, <laughs> it's a long setup but it's a setup so uh, he goes to this high maximum security prison he gets the information. 
while he's in the prison. Now, nobody knows this. Only two people or three people know about this little procedure that took place. Not the FBI, not his bosses at the FBI. Nobody knows about all this. And only the doctor, the, I guess, CIA agent who came up with it, and Nicholas K, not Nick, uh, John Travolta's friend, right? And so they get together, uh, do this thing, send him on this mission. He finds it out. But while he's in the prison, wouldn't you know, Nicholas Cage wakes up from his coma um, with no face. <laughs> he has no face. So uh, he, uh, he calls his crew. They kidnap. Yeah, this is so hard because I'm, yeah, I'm like... <laughs> I'm like telling the story. I'm just telling what's going on in the movie. I'm trying not to do that, but the movie's so exciting. And I want to get to this particular scene. And I had to set it up. I had to talk through it to get to this particular scene. But okay. Uh, Nicholas Cage wakes up. He finds out that his face is gone. He finds that out pretty soon. Um, <laughs> so he calls his crew, kidnapped the, the doctor and everybody else who knew about the little experiment. All right. So he gets the doctor to put John Travolta's face on him. So now <laughs> he can masquerade around as the FBI agent. So now you get now we get to the part. Where I, I wanted to talk on. And the reason I went through that whole breakdown of the whole first act of this movie. The scene. When Nicolas Cage is standing there. He's waiting for uh, 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 his partner to come in. So he can tell him he knows where the bomb is. Blah, say blah. He has the biggest smile on his face. Because he's like, I, I did it. I found it out. The door swings open and he's standing there. You, you get what I'm saying? He's standing there because it's, it's, it's his face. And immediately he knew that this was Caster Troy. And John Travolta, I got to give him all the props too. He brought it. They played off of each other perfectly, I feel. I've, if you ever go back and watch this movie, which I know a lot of people won't, <laughs> but if you ever go back and watch this movie, and the, when the switch happens, um, it is believable in my eyes. It's about as believable as you're going to get. Um, other than the fact that their body types are nothing alike. <laughs> to nothing alike. Because, you know, uh, John Travolta is kind of a, he's a big guy. He's not fat, you know, but he's, he's a bigger guy than Nicolas Cage. So I always wondered, okay, they sway, they switch faces, but what about their physique? You know, I, what about their body type? They're different there, but you got to suspend disbelief. It's movies. But anyways, that scene when they first meet, when, when they first meet back up and they've they've switched was so awesome to me it was like it was all oh, beautiful they, the walk they they mastered each other's walk their their speech patterns and all this other stuff i mean it was this movie is truly underrated like i said cheesy cheesy and <laughs> campy yes yeah, silly all that is all that but Inside of all that, once you peer, peel back those layers on that onion, man, it is it, it is an awesome movie. The action is great. The performances I felt was great. It was an exciting movie. Um, it's one of the best. I, honestly, it's one of the best. If you want to call it a guilty pleasure, fine. We'll go guilty pleasure. I'll 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 bite. I'll bite. It it it, it is. <laughs> but I loved it. I'm, I was all in for it. I love Face Off. Face Off. I'm a grade it. it face Off gets an, <laughs> gets a B plus. I I cannot I cannot I cannot dislike this movie. And I've tried. 
And so I'm really trying because there are a lot of dumb parts in this. They, this the movie's cheesy. Things explode for no reason. You know, <laughs> it's typical John Woo. You know, John Woo is 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 a, a, a action nut, man. He just do. They talk about Michael Bay and his Bayisms. How he, he just blow up everything. Yeah, but it's logical reasons why he blow it up. Um, well, I say logical, but you know, you can see how these things blow up. John Woo, things blow like it, it is, it's a scene in this movie towards the end when a boat flips over in the water and it explodes. And I'm talking about explodes with fire. It's in the water. <laughs> But he just wanted an explosion. And so they <laughs> exploded this boat. Blew up this boat. Uh, but like I said, I loved it. <laughs> I loved it. I cannot hate on this movie. Uh, Face Off gets a B plus, man. So you see my excitement for Face Off. You see my excitement for Face Off. It is my second favorite Nicolas Cage movie. So you may, you may wonder... How can something overtake that? Easy. Um, my number one. Nicolas Cage. Film. Favorite film. Is the 1987 film. Raising Arizona. Gut busting. <laughs> Gut busting. Hilarious. I mean. This comes from the Coen brothers. Who. One of my favorite uh, pair of directors, you know, Big Lebrowski, Fargo, uh, uh, The Tragedy of Macbeth, uh, the list goes on and on. Raising Arizona is so funny. And why I love this so much, it's funny for no reason at all, man. <laughs> it's just hilarious this is a comedy uh i feel underrated even though even though is on the uh american film institute's 100 years 100 laughs list um and it's on the it's uh 45th on barbro's 100 funniest movies list i still feel it is disrespected Raising Arizona is a American crime comedy film which stars Nicolas Cage as High, an ex-convict, and Holly Hunter as Ed, a former police officer and High's wife. Other members of the cast include Trey Wilson, uh, William Forsythe, John Goodman, Francis McDermott, and Randall Tex Cobb. Uh, the movie... Uh, once again, this introduces us to. Well, it doesn't introduce. Well, it introduced to me. <laughs> it introduced me to John Goodman. And I've seen him in things. But in here, it was just something else. Him and William Forsythe. It, it was something about it. It was something about those two that was so funny. And we later learned. Uh. As John Goodman's career went on, John Goodman is an awesome actor, very funny, you know, Roseanne and all that other stuff, uh, the Connors and most recently the uh, the Rice's, Rice's Gemstones, which is pretty funny. Uh, but nobody brings it out of John Goodman like the Coen brothers. Uh, <laughs> every time he pops up in a Coen Brothers film, which is almost all of them, he is hilarious. I I, I, I present to you uh, uh, The Big Lebowski. His performance in The Big Lebowski, he almost stole that movie. Um, I loved him in here. But I even loved Nicolas Cage even more. Because Nicolas Cage... He plays this ex-convict, but he's this soft-spoken. <laughs> he's this soft-spoken guy who gets into this stuff, and it's like it's too big for him. You know what I'm saying? It, it's it's too much for him to handle, and 
they kidnapped this baby. This, the story of this movie, they kidnapped this baby from this, uh, is he a furniture tycoon? Something like that. Uh, furniture store person. But he's a rich guy. But they have, I want to say, six tuplets or something like that. I, I forgot. Or quadruplets. Quatruplet, I, I forgot. It was a lot of <laughs> they had buku kids and hi and ed were trying to have a baby you know they fell in love uh after he got arrested and she was <laughs> she was the one who was taking his mug shot and they fell in love whatever but uh <laughs> so uh they were trying to have a baby but it come came to find out that she was uh uh barren or infertile and she was unable so uh, they tried to adopt, but they couldn't adopt because of High's criminal record. So now <laughs> they're faced with the fact they can't have children and they really, really wanted children. And this uh, tycoon uh, furniture store, I think it was a, I'm, I'm really certain it's a furniture store. This, this, and they have the, they just had quintuplets. A quintuplex, and I don't know how many that is, but um, it was a lot. And they kidnapped one, and the, the reason they kidnapped one, they feel, well, he has enough. <laughs> he has enough. He, they're not gonna miss one, you know. <laughs> so they kidnapped one of the babies. It just so happened the one they kidnapped. Now the guy named was uh Nathan Arizona, sen Arizona Senior. And the one they kidnapped was Nathan Jr. <laughs> so they they kidnapped the one that had his name. And um, I'm pretty sure if they would have got either one of them. It would have been a problem, but whatever. Um, so they have this baby. They, they try to take care of it. And, uh, John Goodman and uh, William Forsythe are two criminals that uh, were old cellmates of High. So they come into the picture and um, they come to live with uh, High and Ed and the new baby and everything. And everybody loves the baby and, you know, all this stuff. But uh, <laughs> that was that was that was fire within itself because, you know, Holly Hunter didn't get along with them because they're criminals. And they're like, well, you married a criminal. But it was a <laughs> You know, it was just it was just funny how they go. And then High, High is having these nightmares. He's having these nightmares about this monstrous, uh, like demon motorcycle <laughs> guy, and he don't know why. Well, anywho's come to find out that uh, Nathan Junior, I mean Nathan Senior, had hired this bounty hunter, hitman, whatever he was. And then come to find out, it was that same guy that High was having these nightmares about. He was a demon, you know. <laughs> he, was, he was like he was a demon. And, uh, yeah, he went after him in in the scene that's, that sticks out to me to this day, which is probably one of the funniest chase scenes ever, was High... He couldn't buy the diapers, right? He, he, he didn't <laughs> get diapers. So he goes to rob this store. But he don't rob it for money. He robs him for diapers. And while he robbing the store for these pampers, uh, <laughs> the guy, the bicycle man, the, the bicycle demon, who's portrayed by uh, Tex Cobb, um, is after him. So he's, there, he's running through the city or this town with these diapers, with a with a uh, <laughs> with a uh, pantyhose over his face, so nobody can know who he is. But you can see through it, and everybody knows who he is. So he's running through the city, <laughs> trying to get away from this biker dude. He's going through the store. They're going through a bowling alley, and oh boy, he's still on the motorcycle. He never gets off the motorcycle. He's riding through these places with the motorcycle after high, and uh, high gets the one guy with uh. This old guy that was in the truck, and he like, he trying to get the guy to drive off, you know, take him wherever. And the guy, the old guy, was like, "Man, you realize you got some panties on your head?" I don't know. That just sticks. They, 
Oh my, I can't, I can't even get through this. God help me. I, I'm trying to get through this. But anyways, the demon bike dude get, gets to Nicolas Cage and beats him half to death, right? <laughs> I mean, just whooping him up, man. And poor Nicolas Cage, around this time, this before Nicolas Cage got kind of muscular. You know, he put on, he worked out these older years. Especially for uh, Ghost Rider. He got kind of cut up for that. But around this time, Nicolas Cage had the muscle mass of a number two pencil. And so he, and Tex Cobb is this big, he's a former football player uh, in real life. Uh, or was he a boxer? I think he was a former boxer. Um, yeah, it, he, he's this big old massive guy. And he's just slinging Nicolas Cage around. <laughs> Like a rag doll. So, uh, there's a scene here. Spoilers. I mean, the movie's almost 40 years old, so deal with it. Um, there's a, the scene at the end when the guy was bear hugging Nicolas Cage, and Nicolas Cage is screaming for his life, and he pulls one of the pins out of a grenade that was strapped to, uh, the biker's chest, right? So the biker lets him go. And he's about to kill. Well, he didn't realize he did it. He let him go. He was about to shoot him. And he holds up his hand to kind of like block the shot. <laughs> block him from getting shot. And while he pulls up his, he holds up his hand, the grenade pin is on one of his fingers. So the biker, he looks down at his, at his, you know, little grenade vest because he had buku grenades. And he looks down at it, and he looks back at Nicholas Cage, and Nicholas Cage, <laughs> Nicholas Cage just said, "I'm sorry." It's <laughs> the way he said it, cause he was sincere. He was like, "I'm sorry." <laughs> it was, my God, bro, you want to talk about rolling on the floor? And I'm what, what, about eight, nine, ten years old? That tore me up. I literally was just dying laughing. And to this day, if it comes on, and I've watched that movie, that part, the whole movie is hilarious. But that part has me on the floor. I, I cannot, I cannot, I can't, I can't, I can't. I got to stop this. Anyways, uh, this movie was hilarious. Just like most of the Coen Brothers films, it is a classic. It has been considered a cult classic. Uh I I agree. It is awesome, awesome movie. Uh, I, <laughs> and Nicolas Cage in it is he's the best man. And this is where I fell in love with Nicolas Cage. At this moment, this is where I said, whatever he's in, I'm gonna watch. And here we are, 2022. If it wasn't for this movie, I would not care about the unbearable weight of massive talent which is coming out this weekend but this movie is the start of my love for Nicolas Cage this is still one of my top I'll say 10 funniest movies I've ever seen if not 5 if not 3 I don't know I gotta sit down and actually go through it one day but this was hilarious Hilarious. A, a little tidbit. Uh, Barry, uh, Barry, what's his name? St uh, Satinfield? He's a director. He directed uh, the Men in Black films. He directed the Adams Family films. Very, very good director. He was the cinematographer. This is one of the first uh, uh, feature films he was involved with. He was the cinematographer of this film, and you could tell if you're a you know student of that type of thing, and you catch the eye of it. His signature kind of uh, camera work here, you can see it, um, in this film where it all started from. But he 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 was a real good friend of the Coen brothers, and they all they worked together a lot until he moved on to make his own films. He also did Get Shorty, which was excellent. But yes, uh this film was made for five point five million dollars. It grossed two hundred and 
$29.2 million. And the Coen brothers said, to this day, this was the most profitable film they ever made. Um, which I find mind-blowing um, <laughs> because of the films they have made. Uh, the Big Lebowski, like I said, but that lost money, actually, even though it's it rivals Raising Arizona as one of my favorite comedies. Uh, uh, no Country for Old Men. My God, people. What a masterpiece. Fargo won an Oscar. I mean, No Country for Old Men won an Oscar. I mean, these people, uh, the Coen brothers are money, but they don't make it. <laughs> At least their films don't. Uh, the remake of True Grit. Oh, man. Come on, man. Yeah, the Coen brothers are money in my eyes. I am huge fans of theirs. And this is where it started with me. This was their second film. Their first film was uh, Blood Sample. And uh, uh, it's more of a dark thriller. And they wanted to make something lighter after that. Because that wasn't really their thing. Even though they have dark subject matter in all their films. But they do it with a lighter tone. Because there's dark subject matter here. I mean, they kidnapped a baby. <laughs> Criminals cri kidnapped a baby. and uh, But it was funny. You know? <laughs> uh, Big Lebowski. That was a kidnapping movie. You know? But they had light tones to it. And, but it's enjoyable. Fargo. Fargo was a dark movie. But it was hilarious. But it was dark. Um... They mastered that. Not too many filmmakers can pull that off, but they can. And um, man, it started here. Mwah. Uh, great film, great performance by <laughs> Nicolas Cage. This is where I fell in love. Raising Arizona gets an A plus. Loved Raising Arizona. Loved Nicolas Cage. I am. Um, there's no more I can say, man. I mean, this is this is why I love him. This is why I, I refuse to give up on Nicolas Cage. Those five films I just named. And if you notice, those are through different times of his career. It, it, this isn't just a, a little run he went on. It, this started in 1987. You know, and I didn't even bring up other films in his filmography. These are just my five favorites. Because he has some others in there. I mean, Vampire's Kiss, which is campy, stupid, but it, I enjoyed it. Um, <laughs> you know, I didn't even bring up Con Air. I didn't bring up, uh, oh my God. The, uh, I was just looking at it. I can't, I'm blanking. But anyway, it don't matter. He's had multiple excellent films. And man, I am so excited. For the unbearable weight of massive talent. Uh, please, Nicolas Cage, don't stop making movies. Matter of fact, he is uh, currently down here in New Orleans making a film. He is currently making a film uh, where he will portray. Hear me out, people. Uh, I'm going to try to get through this without crying. Nicolas Cage is portraying Count Dracula. Yes, they are filming that currently here in New Orleans. Uh, as we speak, I uh, saw a set photo of him as Dracula, and I'm like, yes. <laughs> yes, take my money. I can't wait for that. I love Nicolas Cage, man. I don't care what he's... They can make a two-hour movie of Nicolas Cage making peanut butter sandwiches, and I'm all in. I'm, I just love that dude, because he's going to make that entertaining. I'm telling you, he's going to make it... I brought it up and can't wait Wednesdays when I was talking about Nicolas Cage. Nicolas Cage did a film and I looked it up and I found it and now I lost it again. But um <laughs> it was a film he did uh let me try to hurry up and find it. Blah 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 blah. Willie's Wonderland. People, let me tell you something. This came out last year. I saw it, it was on Hulu. Nicolas Cage didn't have any dialogue in this movie. He didn't do nothing. He killed these little possessed things without talking. He didn't talk the whole movie. And it wasn't because he was mute or anything. He just didn't speak. 
and he, he'll kill the things. He'll go drink a, a energy drink, and he'll play a pinball machine. Machine. Another thing will pop up. He'll go kill that, drink an energy drink, and play the pinball machine. That was the whole movie. And you know what, people? I was entertained because it was Nicolas Cage. Love this dude, man. I <laughs> love this dude. Uh, what's your favorite? Are you a fan of Nicolas Cage? If you are, what's your favorite Nicolas Cage movie? I just gave you five of my favorites, even though I have many others. What's your favorite? You can tell me by emailing the show. KB Radio Podcast at gmail.com. Let me know what your favorite Nicolas Cage performance is. Uh, you could also, if you don't like emailing or don't know how to email, because I'm still learning how to do that, uh, you can <laughs> you can look us up on social media. Yeah, look up the KB Radio Network, whether it's on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, wherever. Let me know what's your favorite Nicolas Cage film. Um, everybody... I truly enjoyed this episode. I love talking about Nicolas Cage. I love going over a, just a few of his films. Uh, and I can't wait to add more to the list. Will it be unbearable weight of massive talent? We'll see. I'll let you know because I'm going to see it this weekend. Uh, everybody, don't forget, if you're listening on iTunes or Apple Podcasts, leave those five stars. Leave those reviews. Helps the show out tremendously uh if you're listening on spotify or iHeartRadio radio or various other platforms you can follow the show follow the show share the show let everybody know you're listening to the kb radio network everybody has been an honor privilege and joy to speak to you today about one of my favorite actors of all time mr nicholas cage can't wait to speak to you again. I love you. Continue to love one another. And until we speak again, you all be blessed. <laughs>